Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so today I am making an amber ale, which I'm actually surprised I've never made before. Um, I love amber ales and feel like they're not popular enough anymore. You know, it's like really hard to come by ambers and browns when you go, I mean, at least when you're trying to buy cans, um, you can usually find the, at least one when you go to a, a brewery proper, but, um, yeah, I like amber ales in the winter mainly because I my tastes definitely swing sweeter. My tastes are always towards the sweeter side though. Not a dessert person, I'm a sweet beer person. Uh, so amber ales, um, I built this recipe this morning. It kind of just seems like, I don't know, my Oktoberfest recipe, but like with a little more color. Um, and it's not a lager. We're, I'm gonna use Safiel 05 for this, um, which is just kind of your generic American uh, ale yeast. Um, and, you know, I saw a lot of recipes that were like using a ton of English malts. I'm not gonna do that. This is gonna be more of an American style. I'm um, gonna use Galaxy and Citra just because I'm trying to get rid of some of the space in my hop fridge and we'll see how it turns out. Uh, also, I'm trying to take this up to Washington because I'm going for a month and my neighbor Cindy is super into Citra. So this is her amber ale. Okay, um, so our grain bill is going to be, oh, um, I'm making eight gallons solely because I'm gonna put this into a like nine and a half gallon fermenter. Um, my large fermenter is full with my tangerine wheat and um, just gonna kind of use all the space that I have um, that I can pressure ferment in. Um, so that's what's gonna happen. My water's already going. Um, I put a Camden tablet in it because it's always chlorine -y here. Um, anyway, grain bill. Um, so we're gonna use 10 pounds or four and a half kilograms of two row, five pounds or 2.3 kilograms of Munich, uh, two pounds of Kara 45 or 907 grams. Um, this Kara 45 is like supposed to be Kara Munich. It's the Dingman's um, Kara 45. I just had it on hand, so I figured it'd give it some nice color. And um, to give us the majority of our color, we're gonna use uh, eight ounces of Caramel 120, which is 227 grams. So let's get this show on the road. And I need to give a shout out as usual to Northern Brewer who gave me all this malt. Um, that's the only way I can make all this beer. And I don't think I mentioned it, but we're gonna make about a 6% or so amber. Um, you know, a little on the higher side not into sessions at all. My mill gap's really fine. Um, just so I get good efficiency. So we've got 10 gallons of water in here for our strike water and that's 37.8 liters. We're making an eight gallon batch which is 30.3 liters. Um, our strike temp, um, I'm doing 156. Um, so that our mash temp can be 152 or 67 degrees. Um, and I'm doing this on my 240 volt 20 gallon claw hammer. The, um, you know, I just noticed that uh, Brewfather actually added claw hammer finally. Thank you. Um, they only have the 120 version on there, but I've been using that profile and um, that's what's in the recipe below. So. I've got links to all the equipment in the rest in the description as well. So if you want to get yourself an awesome Christmas present, I recommend the 240 volt. It is so freaking fast. Okay.
It seems like like an extraordinary amount of green for this. Oh, it smells real good though. I love those roasty toasty malts. It smells like sourdough bread. So I'm only gonna do a 45 minute mash on this one because I am actually brewing another beer after this. I'm brewing a peppermint bark stout um, because Great Divide really impressed me with theirs. <laughs> Holy crap, it was delicious. So I was like, I definitely have to make that for Christmas and take it to my buddies up north so they can experience some Colorado in Washington. All right, I'm turning my heat down to our mash tent. The 152 mash temp, it's pretty even even road kind of mash. Um, just, you know, we're kind of just looking for a clean middle of the road beer. All right. So I'm going to let that sit, set a timer for 45 minutes, and I will see you guys back here. All right, our mash is done. All right, while this drains, I'm gonna turn my heat up to boil. Do you really deserve spent grain? You've been a bad girl. I'm just gonna go ahead and take my pre boil now. I don't even know what it's supposed to be. I'm gonna burn the shit out of myself, probably. Wow, oops. Well, our pre-boil is high. It's like 5.3 or 15.3 bricks. Let's see what that means. So that's 1.065. Our pre-boil is supposed to be 1.058. I mean, honestly, they recommended adding more water than I did. So we might just um, top it off in the end. Cause we're at 7.5% now and it's supposed to be like six and a half. And I'm just gonna move this into my bucket. Our volume's at like eight and a half. So I think I might just add some water right now. Get it up to nine. Oh, it's a beautiful amber color. At least we did that right. All right, now we're at about 14 and a half. So that's 1.061. Gets us closer, but we're still high. So now we're at 7.1% amber. Okay. Honestly, might just call this an imperial red. I love those beers. It's not happy enough though, to be honest. Ooh, actually, I'm wondering if I should increase my hops because of that. That'll nah, be okay. What's the IBU on this? Yeah, it's a higher IBU than I usually do anyway. Okay. Okay, so we're at our 30 minute mark, which means we got to throw in one ounce or 28 grams of Galaxy. All right, hopefully this doesn't fall over. I don't know where my other big one is. One's in the dishwasher. Okay. See you guys in 15 minutes. Oh, I guess I'll measure out the citra. We're gonna do um, two ounces of citra at the 10 minute mark. 
So in 20 minutes, and that's 56 grams. All right, hop edition number two, the two ounces of Citra. I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes, but I'm also gonna throw in a Werflag tablet while I'm here. All right, this amber is done. I'm going to hook up my chiller. I'll go ahead and take the original gravity. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my pump. So once this is all chilled down, I'm gonna transfer it into uh, my Firm King fermenter so I can ferment it under pressure and I'm gonna pitch my Safalo 5 and we'll be set and then I have to brew another beer today. <laughs> Killing myself today. All right, so this is at 76, which is great for pressurized fermentation. I'm gonna just dump this guy in there, start it back up. One thing I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna add some of that firm cap stuff so that the fermentation doesn't go everywhere. Um, we're gonna probably have like eight and a half gallons in here, it looks like. Our ABV is gonna be 7%. Our original gravity was 1.065, I think. Yeah, I, I was like adding water as it boiled and my boil was just super vigorous. So uh, we're in a good spot though. Um, so you're supposed to add like one drop per gallon. And this is just food grade silicon. It's all that's on the silicone, silicone. Um, it's all that's on the label. I don't know. So while we're doing that, I'm going to, which one's higher? Add my yeast. So this is a SO5 um, starter. God, oops, oh well. Um, probably shouldn't fill this this high. Gonna throw my spunding valve on it. Set at 15. All right, we're set. Now I'm gonna get this in my laundry room. It's too cold in here to ferment, unless I've got a heater on it. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. After this, I'm actually jumping right into my peppermint stout. I'm basically just gonna throw some water in here, not clean it, anything. This is essentially the base of the stout without any of the roasted malt, so um, easy. It's super easy if you wanna brew two beers at once to kind of, um, do your lighter beer in the beginning and then do your darker beer. It's like, who's it gonna hurt, you know? All right, see you guys next time.